The FFS2000 is a fusion splicing workstation which is capable of performing all steps of the splice process. Strip, cleave, clean, splice, recoat, and proof test. Some models of the FFS2000 workstation are fitted with a rotary proof tester. This video will discuss how to use the proof tester to determine either the breaking strength of a splice or if the splice meets a minimum strength requirement. Checking that splices pass a minimum strength requirement is usually performed after the fibre has been recoated, if this is being carried out. This verifies that splices are strong enough to survive subsequent handling and manufacturing processes. It is also helpful to use the breaking strength of spliced fibres for manufacturing statistical process control, as this allows the machine performance and the effect of any implemented changes, for example using a new argon supply, to be tracked over time. The mechanical integrity of a splice is largely controlled by the quality of the glass surface around the splice joint. Micro cracks or abrasions in and on the glass in this area can cause localised stress points. Subsequent stretching, bending or twisting of the fibre can cause cracks to propagate through the brittle glass structure and result in fracture. The FFS2000 unit has been designed to minimise fibre handling and contact with the glass surface of the fibre. Fibre holding blocks are used to transfer the stripped fibres around the unit and the splice is carried out in an inert argon environment that minimises contamination. Using the machine in accordance with best practice will result in high strength splices. Once the splice is completed, it is vital that the fibres are unloaded from the splice station correctly to avoid the bare glass touching the filament. First lift the left and then the right hand side of the transfer jig. If you have not yet watched the video on how to load and unload fibres from the splice station, click the annotation or see the link in the description below to learn more. The proof tester consists of two mandrels onto which the fibre is wound. The left mandrel remains stationary. The right mandrel rotates and applies an increasing load to the fibre which is measured by a strain gauge. The applied force is reported to the software. The proof test parameters can be set in the software by either selecting proof test from the upper menu items or right clicking on the proof test icon in the main toolbar. A variety of units can be selected for the proof test measurement. If KPSI or Gigapascal are selected, it is important that the fibre diameter corresponds to the fibre being tested. The peak value is the maximum load that will be applied to the fibre. If the proof tester is being used to determine if the splice fulfills a minimum strength requirement, that value should be used. If, however, the breaking strength of the fibre is being measured, a value in excess of the expected maximum strength of the splice should be used instead. For SMF fibres, a peak value of about 600 kpsi or higher should be used to determine the breaking strength of the splice. The timeout period limits the time period over which the proof test process runs. At the end of the timeout period, the right hand mandrel returns to its starting position and the proof test mechanism resets. If a fibre breaks prematurely, this limits the amount of wait time before the proof tester can be used again. If, however, the fibre reaches the peak strength set without breaking, the proof test mechanism will automatically reset before the timeout period has elapsed. The mandrel should turn and the peak tension achieve slowly, about 5 seconds into the rotation. The rotation rate of the mandrel can be adjusted by turning the ramp screw. Turning the ramp screw clockwise reduces the rotation speed. Turning it anti-clockwise increases the rotation speed. To load the fibre onto the proof tester, first roughly position the splice region centrally between the two mandrels. Pressing the release button on the top of the mandrel moves the clamp forwards. Place the fibre between the clamp and the rubber grip on each mandrel. 
Now, while maintaining tension, wind the fibre twice round one of the mandrels, securing it under the clamp. Make sure that the wrapped fibre is not overlapped. Then repeat for the other mandrel. The unit is provided with a clear plastic proof test shield, which should be used to contain the glass fragments should the fibre break. To initiate a proof test, either press the test button on the unit or click the proof test icon in the software. The right hand mandrel starts to rotate and the proof tester's strain gauge monitors the force applied to the fibre and reports this to the software. This concludes the set of videos showing how to use the FFS2000 workstation. You should now have a good overview of how to use the machine, but if you have any questions, please feel free to contact us.